est charné. Le Premier ministre aura six réunions bilatérales. Hier, après le fin du sommet, le Premier ministre a eu encore trois réunions, une avec le secrétaire général des Nations Unies, une avec le président Macri, qui est le président de l'Argentine, mais aussi le président pour cette année de G20, et à une réunion avec les leaders des petites îles développées. Uh, Aujourd'hui, dans nos réunions, today, une chose qui était un plaisir pour moi était que uh, quelques de nos partenaires ont déjà à souligner l'importance pour eux Uh, de le uh, fonds que le Canada a annoncé au sommet hier pour l'éducation des femmes et des filles, c'est 3,8 milliards de dollars. Et on a déjà écouté à tous nos partenaires de l'importance de cette fonds pour les femmes et les filles dans le monde. Donc, c'est bien d'être à Québec, c'est bien d'être avec vous. Uh, I'm here with the Prime Minister and with my colleagues, Marie-Claude Bibeau, the Minister of International Development, and Ahmed Hussein, the Minister of Immigration. Uh, the Prime Minister and our team have a very busy schedule today in Quebec City. Uh, the Prime Minister will be holding six bilateral meetings. Uh, he has already held a number of them. Yesterday, after the conclusion of the summit, uh, our work continued. The Prime Minister held meetings with the Secretary General of the United Nations, with President Macri of Argentina, who is also the chair of the G20 this year, and that coordination between Canada's the G7 chair and Argentina's the G20 chair uh, is very useful. And also a round table was held uh, with the leaders of the small developing island states, an important area of focus for Canada, in part because of their exposure to climate change. Um, one point uh, worth underscoring from today's meetings, uh, which was a real pleasure for me, was hearing already from our partners around the world their real appreciation for the $3.8 billion uh, which was committed yesterday at the G7 for the education of women and girls. Canada has made its own strong and direct contribution and also Canada really used its convening power and diplomacy to raise this very significant sum which will make a very great difference in the lives of hundreds of thousands of women and girls in the most fragile and dangerous places in the world. And I'd like to especially thank my colleague Marie-Claude Bibeau for the amazing work she did on that. Madame Trudeau, M. Navarro, 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 Navarro a dit qu'il y a une place en enfer pour les leaders qui négocient de mauvaises choix. Il s'attend directement pour les leaders qui négocient de mauvaises choix. Comment qualifieriez-vous ces propos de Madame Trudeau? Du côté du Canada, il est pour moi personnellement Personally, la chose qui est vraiment une insulte, c'est la décision du really côté américain d'imposer les surtaxes sur l'acier et l'aluminium canadien. C'est un acte illégal, c'est un acte injustifié. Et pour moi, act. je suis très insultée et je suis absolument prête de continuer de travailler très fort notre travailleur et notre industrie. Et je sais que le Premier ministre aussi est absolument Insulté is extremely insulted à cause de ces surtaxes, because à cause of that surtax, de ce que les États-Unis ont fait à nos travailleurs et nos industries, et nous continuerons de défendre so, we will continue firmement to notre industrie et nos travailleurs. Oh, non, 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 Mes amis, mes amis, mes amis, je, je vais, mes amis, je vais répéter, je vais répéter en anglais. Ça va? Um, for me, what is insulting and what I object to very strongly is the illegal and unjustified imposition of tariffs on Canadian steel and aluminum. Uh, the, pre the national security pretext 
is absurd and frankly insulting to Canadians. The closest and strongest ally the United States has had. We can't pose a security threat to the United States and I know that Americans understand that. So that is where the insult lies and I want to really underscore and emphasize to Canadians that our government is absolutely committed to standing up for Canadian workers, to standing up for our industry. Madame, As is, yep. is this a diplomatic <laughs> war minister? Is this a diplomatic spat that you're having with the United States? There is certainly a strong contrast in positions. For me, the most important thing is deeds rather than words. And the deed, the action, uh, which Canada has objected to and will continue to object to very strongly was the illegal and unjustified imposition of tariffs on Canadian steel and aluminum. And Canada has objected in words, of course, but mo more importantly, in actions, with a commitment to retaliate in a perfectly measured and reciprocal way. And our retaliatory measures will come into effect on July 1st. Uh, we do that, as the Prime Minister said, uh, more in sorrow than in anger. We regret the need to take this step, but we have no choice. And we will respond always in defense of our workers and our industries. Yeah, to, me, to me, that is the core issue, and that is what the government is doing. So are you still at the negotiating, the negotiating table? table? When you hear people who are in Trump's inner circle, people like Peter Navarro, people like Larry Kudlow, going out on these big American talk shows and taking direct aim at Justin Trudeau, uh, saying that he stabbed uh, Donald Trump in the back, what kind of what kind of reasoning is is do you think behind the, those comments? What is it? Do you feel that has Canada done something to trigger that? Uh, that's a, a very good question, Katie. And uh, one thing that I give thanks for is that I'm not responsible for explaining the reasoning behind any comments made by the officials of any foreign government, and that is a good thing. Um, what I would also say is uh, Canada is very clear. We are very measured. We used fact-based arguments. We believe that trade is win-win and we believe that our economic relationship with the United States is mutually beneficial and reciprocal. The U.S., we do not see trade deficits as uh, the primary or even a particularly significant measure of the significance of a trade, of the value of a trading relationship. We are aware, however, the U.S., this current administration has a different paradigm. So let me point out that the U.S. enjoys a surplus in its trade with Canada overall. It enjoys a surplus in trade in manufactured goods. It enjoys a surplus in trade in agricultural goods. It enjoys a surplus in trade in steel. In terms of the approach that governments choose to take, are, uh, in, in, the mall, okay? in terms of the approach that governments choose to take, uh, Canada does not believe that ad hominem attacks are a particularly appropriate or useful way to conduct our relations with other countries. Well, Having it. said all of that, let me be extremely clear to Canadians and let me say, as the Prime Minister and I said, on the day that the U.S. announced its illegal and unjustified imposition of tariffs against our steel and aluminum industries, the Government of Canada is absolutely committed to standing strong, to defending our workers and our industry, and our retaliatory tariffs will come into effect perfectly reciprocal, perfectly measured, a dollar-for-dollar -dollar response 
on July 1st, Madame. which is Canada Day, perhaps not inappropriate. Madame Furlan, what can be done now? What does this mean for the G7? Do you think the G7 is more fragile now? What does this do to NAFTA? And what happened between the time the U.S. said, yes, we'll sign, and Mr. Trump uh, decided he was not on board? Well, those are a lot of questions, and I will try to answer them. When it comes to the G7, as we said before the summit, it's always helpful and important for the seven wealthiest and democratic countries in the world, for those leaders to be together, to have an opportunity to talk to each other directly, and it's an opportunity as well to talk about issues in which we have a common interest and to work together on them. But it's also an opportunity Sur les enjeux to talk about y a des issues on which Et there is a difference of opinion. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, and uh, su, uh, I au, also want to underscore to Canadians that the G7 avec nos is also a meeting with our Japan. European Et allies and with Japan. Très important and opportunité it's a very significant opportunity for us to speak to our allies, our European allies, Japon, and our Japanese allies about our common interests. With respect to NAFTA, is it still uh, realistic to think that the U.S. and Canada can reach an agreement? On Friday, I had a meeting with Ambassador Lighthizer, with whom I will be speaking um, again this afternoon. And at that meeting, uh, well, he came to Charlevoix, and I can tell you the meeting was constructive. De we que le talked et about the Canada's and the U.S.'s intention to continue uh, our negotiations. Du Canada reste Canada's la même. principle remains et the same, que which is sont convaincus that we que la are convinced économique et que that the economic reality is entre le Canada et that les états -Unis uh, economic sont relations balancées between Canada and the U.S. are balanced and reciprocal, and that means a lot of prosperity for both countries. And we also believe that uh, an agreement is possible. We think that common sense will prevail, and in terms of the negotiations, Canada's position is that we are always prepared to talk. At the same time, la position de Canada Canada's de position is to be reasonable uh, de faire des arguments basés and sur les faits to put forward fact-based arguments and always absolument ferme uh, to firmly defend du Canada, the interests of Canada Canadian. and Canadian so workers. So when it comes to NAFTA, I met, I had a good meeting with Ambassador Lighthizer who came to Charlevoix and I met with him on Friday afternoon. I will be speaking with him again this afternoon. We agreed uh, at our meeting on Friday uh, that we would continue our negotiations on NAFTA. Uh, and when it comes to those NAFTA negotiations, the Canadian position is unchanged uh, from our position when negotiations began in August. And that is to say, uh, we are confident that, as the Prime Minister said when announcing our retaliatory tariffs, we're confident that in the end, economic common sense will prevail. We know our economic relationship with the United States is reciprocal, is mutually beneficial. It is almost perfectly balanced. And we believe there is a serious and positive modernization effort in NAFTA, which can be concluded to the benefit of all three NAFTA countries. When it comes to our negotiating approach, we always bring fact-based arguments to the table. Uh, we are always reasonable, and we are always 
absolutely prepared to and will continue to stand up firmly in defense of the Canadian national interest and in defense of Canadian workers. We are always prepared to talk. That's the Canadian way. Always ready to talk and always absolutely clear about standing up for Canada. Minister, are Minister, they Minister, still Minister, ready? Minister, Minister Navarro said today though, that there is a special place in hell for the Prime Minister. This is an escalation of sort of normal discourse for, even for this administration. How, where does that leave you in kind of the U.S. ties? Is this not poisoning the well? As I said in answer to Joyce's question, uh, Canada does not conduct its diplomacy through ad hominem attacks. Uh, we don't think that that is a useful or productive way to do business. Um, and perhaps we refrain particularly from ad hominem attacks when it comes to our relationship with our allies. Uh, where we are very clear, whereas the Prime Minister said we are clear that we are insulted as a country and we are absolutely clear in making a firm and strong response is when we face illegal and unjustified actions from another country. Uh, and in a way, that feeling of being insulted is most acute when these illegal and unjustified actions come from a country which is an extremely close partner of ours. You know, nice, at, at nice. Our, our friend, our neighbor, our ally in NATO and NORAD. So where we are focused is on these illegal and unjustified tariffs, and we are responding. But Mr. Trump's comments have been condemned by many in Europe and elsewhere. Does this mean there is support uh, for Canada from its allies? La position de nos alliés well, the position of our European uh, allies, le Japon, including Japan, la même que la nôtre, is the same et as le ours. Canada. Nous avons coordonné uh, très étroitement we avec l'Union européenne, avec le Mexique, with notre the liste Union de rétaliation et nos actions. Uh, uh, le Canada, l'Union européenne et le Mexique, actions. et maintenant le Japon aussi. Japan and uh, the European nous Union avons met to uh, this with us mettre and une plainte, déposé une plainte à l'OMC. Uh, le Canada uh, et le Mexique, tous les deux, nous avons déposé une plainte uh, à le chapitre, au panel du chapitre. Du ALENA, we have made a uh, under contre l'imposition des surtaxes NAFTA utilisant le chapitre 232. Alors, nous avons surtax. vraiment une so très bonne coordination avec ces alliés. C'est important de le faire this. et nous it continuerons de le faire. Et je vais vous le répéter en anglais. Uh, Canada has been working continues to work and will continue to work very closely with our allies when it comes to Section 232. Uh, in putting together our retaliation lists, Canada ahead of time was working closely with the European Union and with Mexico. And Canada, the European Union, Mexico and Japan have all raised cases objecting to the use of Section 232 at the WTO. Uh, Canada and Mexico have both also raised cases under Chapter 20 in NAFTA. We believe in the international rules-based order. We know that this action is illegal and we are making our case. Uh, I think that it is extremely valuable to be working in close coordination with our allies. And one of the striking things about this action by the United States last week uh, is that it was directed at all of the closest allies that the United States has, at, at the NATO allies uh, and the NORAD ally of the U.S. That is unfortunate. Have you ever seen a U.S. Uh, president use these terms against Canada, and has that uh, damaged the relationship? 
comme j'ai dit, euh, oh, quand nous avons annoncé euh, la notre réponse à l'utilisation du section euh, du 130 du côté américain, la réponse canadienne était la réponse well, la the plus Canadian forte response was uh, the strongest response dans toute la période d'après-guerre. So, as I said, in the entire uh, after -war when period. the Prime Minister and I announced our retaliatory actions in response to the imposition of steel and aluminum tariffs, Canada's retaliation is the single strongest trade action our country has taken since the Second World War. That is a measure of the seriousness of what the United States has done, and we have responded Again, more in sorrow than in anger, but with absolute firmness and conviction in an equally strong fashion. We regret that the United States has done this, and we are absolutely convinced uh, today more than ever of the necessity of a clear, resolute, strong, and firm Canadian response. And, and I do want to take a moment uh, to thank the, at this point it must be hundreds and hundreds of Canadians who have been directly in touch with me, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more directly in touch with the Prime Minister, uh, standing in support of a strong Canadian action. Uh, I know that the country is united on this, and I am not at all surprised because I know that's what Canadians are made of. And I also want to say to Canadians, I am really confident, as the Prime Minister said in announcing the retaliatory tariffs, at the end of the day, common sense will prevail. And, you know, the fact that we're united right now is going to help us to get there. So the thank, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank Merci. you. Thank you for not stepping on it. Minister of Freeland Scrum, done. I was afraid that 